Okay, so welcome to the first go-to session of the month. This is the first of two lab sessions we'll hold this week. Um, there are always two individual sessions per week, so that's a total of eight for the month. In addition, you, have sh you, you should be attending one global session each week, which is offered at various times for uh, another four go-to sessions. So basically, you're, you're supposed to be either attending live or watching the archives of 12 go-to sessions for the month. That's three per week. Um, I believe I've already posted the link to the global session if you weren't able to attend it. Um, I sent that out as an announcement. Um, and then after these sessions are over, they take about an hour or so to process. But, you know, today's session should probably end around 5-ish or so. So figure that before 7 p.m. Eastern, I should have the recording of this session up. So if you can attend live, great. You get it over with in one fell swoop. But if for some reason the times do conflict with your schedule, um, you can watch it after the fact. In the global sessions, they do take attendance. I don't take attendance just because... Uh, and I'm not using this as like to be mean or to sound like I'm making a threat. I mean, people can do what they they want to do, but people who tend to show up for the individual lab sessions usually do better in the course. Um, not because I penalize people. I would never do that. If people hand in great work without ever attending one of my sessions, then, then so be it. But because I often walk students through the assignments, um, the ones who show up tend to do a little bit better. Um, for example, on Thursday, we'll get into your first major assignment. That's due Sunday. Um, the assignments of this class, they're not terribly difficult, but they seem complicated on the surface because they usually ask students to do about two dozen things. Uh, so students feel like they're having to juggle lots of balls in the air at once. And when I walk students through the process, it tends to become much clearer. So yeah, students who tend to show up for sessions, uh, they just naturally do better because then they hand in work that isn't wildly off or doesn't leave out something that's required. Um, but there's the structure, okay? Three go-to sessions per week, one global, and then two individual sessions with me. The global sessions are the ones that are hosted well, obviously, by someone who's not me, your instructor here, David Sussman. Um, and the, the, uh, they're hosted a couple different times a week for to meet people's schedules. Uh, but mine are pretty f are fixed, so you already know in advance um, when my sessions are happening throughout the month. So I'm not offering them several times a week, or I'm not offering the same individual session giving the equivalent of different showings throughout the week. No, no, no. Two sessions per week at fixed times, and they're completely different sessions um, that I hope people attend. Um, okay, there's me. I know Full Sail puts a lot of emphasis on professionalism, as, as they should, and you should always refer to your instructors or miss, as Mr. or Miss. Uh, I don't mind being called by my first name. I think if your instructor gives you permission to do so, that's perfectly fine. Um, most students aren't comfortable doing so, but if you, if you do with me, you're not going to get yelled at. I, I don't care. Um, I've already responded to lots of people's queries and questions, and you've probably noticed that I sign off with my first name. So that's sort of an ind indication or invitation that it's okay to call me by my first name. Uh, but do keep in mind that for lots of instructors here, that's that's not okay. So don't do so until you're given explicit um, permission. Okay, so here's what we'll go over today. Sure, Mr. David works. <laughs> uh, by the way, I taught at the University of Alabama a long time ago, and oh, it was so difficult to get them to not call you Mr. Sussman or Professor or, or something like that because they're so formal down south. Um, but they had these cute little accents, so I kind of forgave them. Okay, so here's what we're going to go over. Uh, just a general welcome. I'll give some quick tips for success. You'll learn a little bit about me, and then we'll get into stuff that's really related to this class. Uh, you know, what is digital literacy? And then really a reminder of what we're going to do this week. We got off to sort of a late start. Um, technically, we instructors were off on Monday and Tuesday. Um, but I know some of you were already popping your heads up on Labor Day, and I was trying to respond to as many people as quickly as possible. Uh, but it, it, it does feel, at least from our end as instructors, that we're kind of starting today, which is a little bit of a late start. A late start. Uh, so I do want to go over the assignments, because normally at this point I would have already mentioned them. Uh, including the digital identity assignment, which uh, some of you already started, which is awesome. And then we'll leave some time open at the end for questions, if you have any. Um, first of all, welcome, everybody. Welcome to Full Sail University. Uh, this is a lot of fun teaching this class. By the way, I teach in two different departments. Mostly, I'm a member. Of, I'm a member of the English department, 
So some of you will see me in a couple months again when you take English composition, but I also teach digital literacy because I'm interested in these issues, and I think there's some crossover between English and digital literacy. Uh, but what I like about digital literacy is I get all of you, I think, aren't you all new? Is there anybody who is not brand new to the university? Occasionally we get some people who take the class out of order or they had to leave full sale for a while and come back. But I think all of you are brand spanking new, right? Like this is your first month at full sale. This is your first course. Uh, yep, I'm getting lots of yeses in the chat box. Okay. And what's great about that is because... Um, I get to feel that excitement. I mean, I get that excitement too. Um, you're brand new at the university. You're you're ready to hit the ground running, and I like to sort of feed off that energy. Um, there are challenges. For example, I become sort of the point person for every question you might have. So yeah, I get a lot of questions throughout the day, but um, I can't remember who I've already answered in this class. I think I've spoken with Taylor. Uh, I think I spoke with Jordan. Uh, but s some of you can already confirm that I've gotten back to you pretty quickly, um, regardless of the the holiday weekend. Um, so I do try to stay on top of messages. I understand because you're brand new to the university that I'll often become the person that you have questions for, even if I can't answer them. Uh, but I'll try. There's also a welcome video that I've posted, both on as an announcement and on the community board, which uh, gives some some information. Some of it's a, a joke, well, a joke disguised as the truth, um, that I, I really do have a lot of free time, so I do try to stay on top of people's uh, messages and questions and get back to them, even if it's technically in my off hours. Now, that's not a promise that I'll always be lightning fast. Don't get spoiled and think, oh, well, he'll contact me in 15 minutes or in an hour. I mean, I may have other things going on that evening or that weekend. But in general, I'm, I'm pretty quick with, with the turnaround on things. Um, so welcome to Full Sail. Uh, I'm glad that you're here. I'm excited to work with you this month. We're going to have a lot of fun. Um, tips for success, like what you should do to, to do well. Um, already I've mentioned one, ask questions, and I repeat it three times on this slide. Okay, so asking questions is important. I've already mentioned attending or watching all the go-to sessions um, and reading through all the materials carefully, especially assignment sheets. I mean, yes, I will try to walk students through major assignments as they come up throughout the term, but I still can't go over every small detail that's on the assignment sheet, so make sure that you're paying attention to those uh, because it's, it's a little bit awkward in that we, we, we do take off points when when certain elements are missing and you don't want to have that happen on your assignment. So make sure that you're looking through everything uh, thoroughly. Um, and what else could I add to this? Uh, the only thing I would add is, is to be positive, like really just to channel that energy, that excitement you have for being here into the class. Um, I can say that you're at a great place to be, and I'm not just saying that. I'm not trying to shill for Full Sail University. I, I shouldn't say this, but, I mean, when I came out here, I wasn't sure. I've been here almost two years, by the way, but I wasn't sure what I was getting into because, and you guys probably know as you research schools, like there are so many schools out there that give schools like Full Sail that are in the for-profit area a bad name. Um, but after being here for two years, I'm excited about being here. The place is absolutely legit. It's not a diploma mill where we just rubber stamp people through classes and they don't learn anything. Uh, the people really work hard and are passionate about their areas of study and make it through the program stand a, a very good chance of, of not only finishing the program but getting their foot in the door within the industry. True, you might have to start off pretty low. It might even be an unpaid thing like an internship, but the important thing is getting your foot in the door to an industry that maybe otherwise would be closed if you didn't have the, uh, the right avenue. Uh, no, I didn't, I didn't draw this. Every image that I use in a presentation, um, I give a photo credit for. When we get to discussing one of your first assignments, which is the digital identity assignment, um, there's a very strict rule that you shouldn't be using images that aren't yours because we haven't yet discussed how to properly cite images or where we can find images that are allowable to be used. And that's why for the first assignment, you're not supposed to be touching any images that, that aren't yours. But in presentations, I, I make use of images that I find through allowable, um, what's it called, creative commons databases and give full credit for them uh, so yeah there's my final tip okay be positive 
you're in the right place. I'm excited to work with you. Uh, and harness that energy because, like I said, we don't rubber stamp students through. We're not like those other schools. You know, Full Sail doesn't – we don't broadcast on, like, television where, where if you're sitting at home at 2 in the afternoon, you see some advertisement for some school uh, that wants your money, but they're just going to pass you through. Um, we don't do that here. Like, you have to do the work, and you have to learn. Um, and I don't think the work you'll do for this class is tremendously super difficult, but there's a lot to do, and there's a lot of um, emphasis on, on doing it well. Um, so you'll need to draw upon that energy this month. Um, and get used to it, because that's how it's going to be for most of your time here at Full Sail. Okay, so here's some information about me. Um, some quick facts. I mean, I've been teaching for over 15 years, mostly in more traditional settings. So I've taught at four-year universities. I've taught at smaller um, private schools. I've taught at community colleges. I'm here at Full Sail. Uh, but most of my stuff came before before full sale it is most of my experience came in the more traditional classroom settings which were kind of out of date maybe it's because I was teaching mostly English classes and for some reason English is slow to sort of join the 21st century but one of the awesome things about teaching here at full sale is that we embrace technology here I am talking to all of you through the power of this program um, some of you, most of you probably are online students. About a third of you are probably campus students. But it doesn't matter if you're sitting in Idaho or California or North Carolina. Like, we're all meeting as a, as a class today, which I think is pretty cool. Um, so I've sharpened my skills. I was no technophobe before I came here, but it was just, you know, I was, I was previously teaching at places where there wasn't much emphasis on technology, whereas here there is. Uh, my backgrounds include film. I've taught introduction to film at other places. Music, I, I mean, I haven't taught film, music, but I, I studied piano um, growing up. Um, and creative writing, which is my specific interest within English. So what's great about that is that there's a good chance that my interests co uh, connect with yours on some level. Um, we have a film program here. We have lots of music people, either production or recording arts. Uh, we have people who are involved in the creative end, whether it's script writing or... Uh, what have you um, okay so that's also what's cool too is that you'll find that a lot of your instructors know quite a bit more about certain industries or certain elements of pop culture or certain creative endeavors and than you would typically expect from your instructor at a different kind of, of school um, yeah and then there are two jokes here um, okay because I don't look like Channing Tatum at all uh, just for real quickly, for whoever's interested, I've previously taught the University of Alabama, Ohio University, uh, the University of Missouri, so three pretty big four-year schools, uh, Missouri Valley College, which is a small private school, Columbia College, which is also a small private school, um, a community college, and now Full Sail. And uh, most of my, co my courses that I've taught have been in the English realm, so composition, literature, business writing, creative writing fiction um, more than anything introduction to film and now of course at full sale digital literacy so yeah I, I've taught a pretty wide spectrum of things um, and you'll find that for the most part your instructors have a pretty deep background either within the industry or within teaching okay so let's talk about DGL on FSO at FSU which could be confusing because most people think of FSU as being Florida State, but it could stand for Full Sail University. And FSO, of course, stands for Full Sail Online. That's just a short thing that we use to refer to, to the website. Oh, by the way, let me get away from this for just one second and show the website for our class. Mm. Let me open up a new tab, actually. Okay, so here's what we call the FSO platform, right? The uh, Basically the core structure that you'll be accessing. Hopefully, you should be checking every day. Uh, and the reason I say this is because this is a pretty new system. It's about four months old. But in the past, students had to communicate with instructors the old-fashioned way through email. Or if we wanted to contact students, we had to do, through, through so, uh, do so through email, which is frustrating because students in 2014 really have little interest in checking email. So it's frustrating. It was frustrating to send out a class-wide email, and maybe half the class really checked what you said. But now we have an interior uh, communication system that's more kind of Facebook in style, in which uh, 
you get notifications up here to let you know when something's waiting for you. Uh, but real quickly, if you need to send me an important message that you need to hear back from, use the envelope icon, okay, to send me a message. I know that if you go into individual activities, like let's go into the digital identity, which is your first assignment th this week, um, or the first graded assignment, I should say, and go into it. Well, things look different on my end. That's the actual discussion board, but maybe I should have picked something else. But when you go into an activity, you have an opportunity to leave a comment. Um, the problem with comments are that it goes not to my messages folder, but to my just general notifications. And I get notifi notified every time someone even sneezes. So, for example, Kevin posted a comment on the discussion board. I got a notification. Uh, Mikkel Bauer submitted the professionalism activity. I got a no notification. So if you leave a comment, it tends to get buried within all the notifications, meaning it's hard for me to see. I try to keep my, my eye open and check every day, but occasionally I'll miss something. So if you do need me uh, to leave me a message that you want an answer to, um, use the envelope icon, okay, and actually send me a message. Because um, already, and by the way, I'm not blaming anyone. But already I've, I've had to kind of um, search for comments that were left for me that weren't sent as messages, but that's okay because you guys are all learning the system. Okay, back to this. DGL and FSO. We just looked at the FSO platform. So when you enrolled for this course or you were placed in this course um, and you saw that it was called DGL, Digital Literacy, like what does that mean to you or what does it, what does it bring to mind? Like when you hear the term digital literacy, what do you think of in in general? Because we'll spend all month kind of defining it a bit better and looking at different aspects of it. But what are your sort of just broad expectations when you see that term digital literacy? Anybody want to give it a goal either by typing in the chat box or you can also raise your hand. There's a little hand icon on your panel that if you press it, um, I can see that you have your hand up and then I can take you off mute and you can actually speak out loud. Uh, Kevin says the ability to communicate correctly and accurately online. Okay, good. Yeah, that's that's a huge part of it. And actually, that's great because it gets to sort of, I think, the, the part that a lot of people forget about. Um, and Lauren says being able to use technologies to comp uh, technology to accomplish everyday tasks. Um, okay, good. And Angelica says something kind of similar. Communication, utilizing and understanding our digital world. Um, yes, all that. Great. And I, I think there's a way where we could probably combine what every person has said there and come up with a pretty good de definition because Lauren's emphasizing more the tools aspect of it, which is absolutely one, one half of it and an important half, learning different tools and how to use them. Um, in this class, you'll be introduced to a couple different tools that maybe you had heard of before, but if not, you're going to learn about now. Uh, but the other half of it is the stuff that Jordan mentions now and Kevin mentioned to begin with, which is not just the tools, because if we wanted to teach a class on how to use tools, then that would be pretty simple. We would just say, okay, uh, today's go-to session, we're going to teach you the ins and outs of, um, you know, uh, PowerPoint. Uh, next week, we're going to teach you the ins and outs of iMovie. Um, by the way, most of you probably don't have your MacBooks yet. You won't get them if you're an online student until month five. But um, eventually you'll get your, your launch boxes, which is your MacBook, and it comes installed with great stuff like iMovie and GarageBand. But we could teach an entire course to just focus on those sorts of software. But that's only one half of digital literacy. The other half is what uh, a couple of you have already mentioned, right, which is understanding the world we live in or learning how to, to act appropriately or how to transfer basically what we usually think of as normal citizenship, what we do when we walk out the door each morning, and transfer it into what we do when we go online. Because a lot of us forget that we also have a presence online and how we carry ourselves um, can, can, tell, can tell a lot about ourselves. And if we're not careful, it can, can get us into trouble. We'll get into some of those issues throughout the month because it's pretty, it's pretty interesting. Okay, so your first assignment is to do this thing called uh, the Digital uh, Identity Project. And let me go back real quickly to the activity itself. Uh, basically, the gist is you should have, well, hopefully you've read, 
let me ask, how many people have read the Prensky piece, which is um, about digital natives versus digital immigrants? It's uh, an essay that you, you had to read. It's kind of an older essay. I think it's from, I can't remember, 2001, I want to say. Uh, yeah, 2001, someone confirmed. I love this article. You don't have to. If you don't like it, you can say so. But did people find this reading interesting? Did you find it true? I mean, this essay came out 13 years ago. Is it still relevant? Or should we be eliminating it from the syllabus? Tony says it was long. Okay, yeah, sometimes I hear that complaint or that the wording is a little bit stiff or academic for some people's tastes. Uh, okay, Kevin says, but it needs updating. I'd be curious to see what needs updating. Um, I can kind of see that, but I think... By the way, the Prensky reading is incredibly famous. Like, it's one of those essays that has become sort of canonical, which means that it's like it's going to be read probably for a long time. Uh, because, yeah, I agree with Tony, that even though it came out in 2001, like the big picture ideas in it, I think are incredibly relevant. You would think that uh, an essay on technology would just be like horribly out of date, like something we would just point at and laugh and think, oh, remember 2001? We were completely different people back then. But it's actually prescient, which is just a fancy word of saying that it was able to sort of predict issues that were big then but have just become bigger now. Um, right? That we, we have sort of two worlds of people. People are either comfortable with technology or people who are not. And where do you fall into that category-wise? And also when it comes to teaching, like is there this divide? I ask you, can you think back to your high school classes or even before that, did you ever feel a divide between teachers who seemed to come from a completely different generation or universe than the one that you live in? Um, okay, lots of people saying yes. That's where we try to change things here at Full Sail. Um, we try to bridge that gap. In some ways we have to. If you're going to teach an online class, it'd be, it would be pretty lame if we just said read this, read that, write on this, write on that without interactivity or without creating things um, or without delivering information in lots of ways, which is why I actually do spend time walking students through the assignments because if I just said, oh, read the assignment sheet, explains everything, A, that's not entirely helpful. And B, as the, as the essay indicates, people learn in different ways. And in 2014, not too many people want to sit down and read a wall of text that tells them what to do. They expect to see instructions delivered in different ways. Um, so, yeah, we're, we're very aware, we're aware of this, which is why we assign that reading. Um, trying to catch up with the comments. Lauren says her sister teaches fifth grade, and she's on the border of not knowing how to use technology to teach. Yeah, I'm going to get into that just a little bit when I talk about my digital identity. Uh, lots of people saying that they fell asleep in high school. <laughs> uh, uh, and lots of people seeming to, to agree. So, yeah, we know what we're talking about, where there's this divide. And it's not because teachers are terrible people or that they don't have great knowledge to give. They do. But it's just they haven't quite learned that there's a group out there that needs to receive information in lots of different ways, not just by lecturing, not just by reading, but by having videos, by having, uh, you know, more interesting, creative, interactive assignments, and so on. Um, so your first thing to do, uh, it's the 1.4 digital identity assignment, um, is to create a sort of mini project. Uh, you, you need to use a Web 2.0 tool to create something, and I'll get into in a second what Web 2.0 tools are. Uh, but you basically need to create something that represents who you are. Um, you need to use the Prensky article to come up with your own unique term that defines who you are. So, for example, I haven't yet looked through these because I've, I've, I uh, haven't had the time. Hopefully tonight I'll jump on the board and, and dig around but like Paul has already mentioned that he's a digital sophomore okay that's his unique term to describe who he is in terms of um, a digital citizen um, once you kind of create your new unique term then you'll explain it a bit in depth and thoughtfully uh, and here's his web 2.0 mini project he used a comic generator called bit strips uh, to create an image that captures who he is so um, I haven't read through this yet, but I'm guessing a digital sophomore means he's not brand new to technology, but he's still learning it. 
And so the comic sort of demonstrates that at times it can theme, seem, uh, feel overwhelming, right? The laptop and the smartphone and the tablet seemingly angry with him and weighing down on him. Um, and then you even get the description here. Paul's feeling overwhelmed by technology. Um, I don't think Paul's in this session. I, I apologize, Paul, for using you as the, the guinea pig for this session, even though I haven't, hadn't yet looked through your, your post. But it serves as a, as a good example um, of what you need to do. Come up with a unique term. Thoughtfully define it, explore it. Um, in, a, in a pretty robust paragraph and then use a web 2.0 tool to come up with some creative representation of what that means um, and I'll, I'll give some other examples of other web 2.0 tools you can use uh, but there's one bitstrips I'll go ahead and type that in the comments area so people remember it most people have heard of bitstrips right it's a pretty you see it all the time People like to use uh, bit strips to make uh, Facebook posts, reporting on how they're feeling on a certain day. Yeah, Texito, which I'm going to mention as well. So, yeah, lots of you guys know these things probably even better than I do um, because I know them, but I often sometimes haven't played around with them. Like, I've played around with bit strips, I've played around with Powtoon. Um, uh, oh, God, what's that photo? Animoto. I've played around a little bit with Animoto, but you guys might know tools uh, that I haven't found yet. So, um, Real quickly, there is an assignment sheet for this that you should read through. I'm not going to bring that up. But with every assignment, there's also a rubric. I, I recommend strongly looking at the rubric always because this tells you like what you need to do to get the highest grade possible or if you don't care about the highest grade possible, what you need to do to get by get by uh, by the skin skin of your teeth um, so for example you get graded on your vision right it needs to be you know it could be an image a collage a video a piece of audio uh, that's delivered using a two, web 2.0 tool um, and it has to capture digital identity so sometimes people will just slap like a random photo on the page and I think well a that's not a web 2.0 tool really and B, I'm not sure if that photo you just slapped on there really communicates your digital identity. Um, so make sure that you're, you're truly doing what the assignment asks. Uh, did the written explanation, uh, is there a written explanation that not only defines and further explains your digital identity, but also connects back to the Prensky article? Okay, so I do expect on some level for the written explanation to connect back to the article in a, a fairly specific way. Um, you always need to engage with at least two of your classmates, so look at what they've produced and comment. Um, you shouldn't be just commenting generically or mechanically like, hey, it looks great or awesome job, but you should really try to be engaging with them. Um, I'll try to model what that looks like when I jump on the board, hopefully tonight, and respond to people's um, posts. And you get some points for grammar and mechanics as well. So always be aware of what, like, what the assignment is asking for because I have to be the mean instructor then and start taking off points. Like, no, this really, this vision, it's okay, but I can't really see how the digital identity is represented. Or it wasn't really created or delivered using a Web 2.0 tool. Or, yeah, there's a written explanation, but it makes no connection to the Prensky article. Um, okay, so be aware of what you're being graded on. Okay, where was I? Oh, I was going to d define my digital identity. Um, I don't have a project to share on the board. I, I probably should. To be honest, I really should, because uh, that would be useful, I think. But I, I'll just deliver it in the in the uh, go-to session. I like to call myself a digital adapter. And the reason I say that is because I'm sort of between worlds. I was born in... By the way, this picture is supposed to capture the 1970s. So I was born in 1971. So if I do the math, that means I'm 25 years old. <laughs> awesome. Uh, okay, so I was born in 71, which means I'm, I'm, I'm probably a bit older than, than most of you in this class. We do have some older students, but for the most part, I'm, I'm probably older than, than a lot of you. Um, but because of that, it means that I'm sort of in between worlds. Um, I'm comfortable with technology, yet I'm always learning in ways that most of you probably can do, can do in, in two seconds naturally. It just takes me longer. Uh, for example, let me make sense out of this picture because you're probably wondering, why is there a Mexican, Mexican dinner st staring me in the face? Like back in the 70s, this is what a frozen dinner looked like. They were these space age things 
that came in an aluminum foil tray and were covered with aluminum foil and you'd stick it in the oven and wait 40 minutes for the thing to cook but you'd be so excited because like I said you it really did feel sort of space age the idea that you could stick a, a finished dinner in the oven and in 40 minutes you would have something ready to eat and of course nowadays nobody would ever wait that long for a meal because we have frozen dinners that you throw into the microwave and you nuke them and in six minutes they're done uh, but I'm old enough to remember a time before microwave ovens, right? To me, the microwave oven was like this amazing invention that appeared in the early 1980s. Um, or this is what a television looked like when I was growing up. It was something that typically had knobs. You might have had a remote. It really got five channels. I grew up in Chicago, so you had the three major networks. NBC, ABC, CBS, then you had Channel 9, WGN, which was local to Chicago, and then you had PBS. That was it, okay? I can remember when cable television came to the Chicago area, again, in the early 80s, and how it just seemed amazing. But again, I grew up before these things that are so commonplace that you sort of take it for granted. And even now in 2014, right, for some of you, even cable is sort of like old-fashioned. Like, I know people who could care less about watching cable or getting satellite. They'd much rather rely on Netflix or Hulu or just, uh, you know, downloading or watching YouTube. Uh, but I'm really old school. I can remember a time where there were only a couple channels. Uh, I remember a time where computers looked like this. This, by the way, is a five and a quarter sized floppy disk. <laughs> Later would be updated by the much more modern three and a half floppy uh, but yeah, that's what computers look like, and I can remember when they look like that. Uh, I remember when the predecessor to the iPhone looked like this. A giant brick-sized thing that you would hold to your ear. I remember when your portable music device looked like this. I had a Walkman uh, back in the 1980s that I would actually use when I would ride my bike on my paper route. That you'd put your cassette tape in. Or if you needed to save the battery, because the cassette would, 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 would use up the battery so quickly, you could listen to your FM receiver. <laughs> uh, but of course, now things have changed, right? We have much, much cooler stuff. We have cool things like tablets and giant HD televisions and smartphones and uh, gaming consoles. And I have all four of these things. <laughs> uh, but that just shows, like, I'm a digital adapter, okay? I've lived in both worlds. I remember a time where we didn't have access to these things. And yeah, at times I can exaggerate and make it sound like I was the person who walked back and forth to school through six feet of snow uphill. And uh, My life wasn't that rough. But I do remember a time before we had all these really super cool gadgets. Um, and because of that, I'm sort of in between. I don't think I'm out of touch. I don't think I'm a Luddite, which is just a fancy term for someone who refuses to, to deal with technology. Like, I've always felt pretty comfortable around tech technology, but I admit, like, some students just grab onto it a lot better uh, than I do. Yeah, Lauren, I can remember playing outside. Like, that's what you did in the summer. Like, you ran out of the house in the morning. You would come back home for lunch, which you'd rush to eat with your with your mom or whatever and then you run right back outside again um i don't know if kids still do that uh, i i have two kids uh it's too much information they live out of state with their mother but okay i have two kids and i don't know there seems to be a lot of television watching <laughs> a lot of uh, a lot of sitting around uh but yeah I, I remember being outside constantly when i was when i was a kid uh where was i Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the point is is that even though I'm pretty comfortable with technology, I have to learn. Like mentioning my two kids. Okay, there's a good example. I bought some iPod Touches like two years ago because uh, my daughter wanted a cell phone. But at 10 years old, it's like, no, 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 you're not getting a cell phone. Who, you, who, who do you need to call? You're 10. I, I don't care about your, uh, you need to text so-and-so. But the iPod Touch worked nicely because it's not a phone, but she can still text. She can just still download apps. It's basically an iPhone. It's just without the phone. Um, and I got one for myself so we could FaceTime back and forth and, and, and stuff like that. Um, but here's how naive I was. I thought I was really going to have to walk her through it. Like, here's how you swipe the thing on. Here's how you navigate about. And she just grabbed it and started running with it. And I didn't know how she knew how to do that. I'm guessing it's from, like, friends. She must have learned this from others. 
But she already knew how to do these things. She already knew how to put emoticons <laughs> in messages. Um, she already knew how to do this stuff naturally. And I have a, a son who's six, and same thing with him. Like he, He'll take my tablet, and he starts swiping the screen, he turns on Netflix, he starts looking for whatever cartoon he wants to watch. Um, and it's pretty amazing to see. Now, those aren't really very sophisticated or difficult moves to make, but still, my, my larger point is, like, I often have to slow down and learn how to do things. Like, I don't just hit the ground running uh, on certain things. There's, there's still things, like, I don't completely get. Either I don't know how to use or I don't really see their purpose. Like, I've yet to... Well, that's not true. I've joined Twitter, but I have no idea what to do with it because it seems completely uninteresting to me. And yet I feel out of touch. I feel like a grandpa. I feel like, how could all these people be tweeting and obsessing over this thing and I could care less about it? So is it that it's just not my thing? Or does it mean that I'm out of touch? Does it mean that I need to sort of get with it? I don't know. Uh, but yeah, uh, which brings me back to the, the assignment, which I'm going to return to in just a second, that some of you will know Web 2.0 tools that I haven't heard of. Like, I only know about Animoto because a student used it two months ago, and that was the first time I had I'd ever seen it. Okay, lots of people in the chat are saying they don't like Twitter either. Yeah, I don't want to get too much into this, but, like, I don't get it. Like, I thought it was something that would be, like, you'd receive important notifications throughout, and you'd just be able to read them. But I don't understand why I need to go into the program to read 140-character messages from people I'm just not that interested in hearing from. Like, I, I don't I don't know. I mean, maybe there's a function if you know other people who use Twitter. It's a cool way to communicate quickly between one another. But if you want to follow, like, bigger people or famous people, I, I don't I don't know. They never seem to have anything that interesting to say. And if they did, I would just re- prefer to get it, like, pop up on my smartphone. But because these people post sometimes dozens of times a day, that's not really possible so i don't understand the value of going into this program to read messages by people i could care less about anyway there's my speech to show how out of touch i am uh lauren says her nephew is two and already knows how to use an ipad (laughs) yeah it is amazing what they can do especially if you've seen the other end of that like my dad who's like 70 yeah 70 like he finally for the first time ever a couple years ago used the computer because my mom's pretty comfortable with technology and my dad is like a typical Chicago resident lives for the Chicago Bears lives for football season so my mom had to show him like how he could read news stories online about the Chicago Bears but beyond that he can't really do very much but there's the opposite right you have someone who's at the older ed- edge of the of the thing right a 70 year old person who's not really comfortable doing anything that involves a computer he doesn't know about email he doesn't know, I mean, he could care less, obviously, about things. He doesn't know what Facebook or Twitter are. Uh, and then, yeah, there's little kids. They could be two, and they know what to do. Michael, your 70-year-old grandma plays Xbox. That kind of sounds like my mom, who's now a grandma. Uh, she's, what is she now? Like, uh, She's got to be 66. And, yeah, she she's downloading, like, pirated things from the Internet. She's got this thing connected she's got that thing connected so she's like the the techno person in her house <laughs> my dad doesn't know how to do anything uh but yeah i'm somewhere in between i think i'm mostly in touch but i'm sometimes slow like two years ago i finally got on or maybe three years ago it was i finally got on facebook and i thought wow i'm awesome i'm with it even though three years ago already most people had young people that is had moved on past facebook like facebook was already lame three years ago because people like me old people were already starting to invade it but i thought i was with it <laughs> i still think i'm with it because i check facebook but but uh, people have moved on uh you're right reddit i don't even know what reddit is but i hear it all the time uh or uh remember when the president last year appeared on that program between two ferns like i had no idea what that was but young people had heard of it they knew what uh, that it was this comedy program with zach uh, galifianakis but like i'm in the wrong uh what do you call it target group I had no idea what that was. Yeah, there's Instagram. I have that, but I never use that either. I could care less. My daughter uses it, though. Oh, God, she's always... Tale of two generations. I'm always getting updates or photo alerts from her. (laughs) (laughs) Right? Tale of two generations. I think it's cute, though. Yeah, I missed MySpace. I wasn't hip to that. I I was well behind the times. 
I knew of it, but uh, didn't participate in it. Okay, so yeah, I'm a digital adapter. I'm trying to find like balance in the universe. I'm trying to weigh what I need to do to keep current and to sort of be helpful uh, to people who are typically younger than younger than I am. Um, while also recognizing that I do have a background that's more traditional. And both sides actually are valuable, um, which I actually have a speech on that I'll give in the fourth week, I think, uh, about balancing the, the, the traditional values that we hold in the regular world and how they can be translated to the online world. Uh, but that's who I am, a digital adapter. Okay, so here's a quick reminder of what you need to do. I've sort of explained verbally, and I showed an example of one student's post already. Uh, but here's just a reminder of the real basics you need to do for this first assignment. You need to come up with a unique term for your digital identity. So I came up with digital adapter. Paul's was what? Digital sophomore. Um, and you'll create a sort of visual project. It doesn't have to be completely visual. It can be audio. Um, but that represents your digital identity. So it can be a short comic. It can be a word collage or word cloud. Um, it can be some sort of you know, some sort of hybrid thing that you make on your own, something that kind of works as a poster or a collage. Um, it can be a, a photo sort of presentation. Um, it can be even like a song or a YouTube video. Um, so it can be just about anything, but it has to have a connection. It has to capture your digital identity. Um, and you should, there is a frequently asked questions document that gives some examples of other tools you can use. Um, some of the ones that we've already mentioned in this session are Powtoon. Uh, have most of you heard of Powtoon? It's a really cool tool. Um, it creates like short animated cartoons. Technically, it's presentation software. So you would think presentation software, uh, Keynote, PowerPoint. But it's so much more interactive than that that you sort of forget that it's presentation software. Uh, basically, it gives you the power to create short cartoons. Um, it's pretty awesome. So... If you've never heard of it, you might check it out because it's pretty easy to use. It's like anything else. Um, it gives it's free for basic setup. It gives you lots of basic tools that you can use, and it's it's pretty much you can hit your hit the ground running. Um, Wordle, this is a popular tool. Tagzito as well uh, to make sort of word clouds or word jumbles. That image we saw a couple slides ago. Let me see if I can bring it back up. Uh, I hate it when this thing doesn't. Right, this thing, okay. Like there's an example of a word cloud. Um, so there's an option. Um, and yeah, the other stuff I already mentioned. Write an in-depth explanation. Make sure that you're connecting your ideas to Prensky reading. And before the activity ends on Sunday, you should be responding to at least two of your classmates' efforts with, with thoughtfulness and engagement and energy. Uh, not just saying, hey, awesome job, or cool, really cool. Um, and yeah, you basically have two graded assignments this week. Your digital identity. I need to update that because that shouldn't. Well, I can't remember. Uh, I, can someone tell me? I forgot to check because we got a late start. Does your digital identity say, say that you need to have it up by Wednesday or Thursday? I think it says Thursday, right? Yeah. Let me go in there and fix that right now. Because typically this is an assignment where we want people to post by Thursday, but because we got a late start this week, it's 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 been shifted from Wednesday to Thursday. Okay, so by Thursday you're supposed to p make your initial post, so your sort of visual or audio project. Uh, but then you have until Sunday to complete the two responses to your classmates. Okay, so think of it as you haven't you're supposed to have until Thursday to post your project. And, and uh, then have till Sunday to complete it entirely. Though I recommend if for some whatever reason, if you don't get it finished by Thursday, I encourage you to try your hardest to do so because you might lose five points for not. It's still always best to get something up on the board before Sunday. So don't think that because you missed Thursday's cutoff point that somehow the assignment is closed and the discussion board is closed. No, no, no. It remains open until Sunday. So it's always most important just to get things completed even if they're, they're late, then nothing at all. Oh, Lauren, does it say Monday? Okay, then <laughs> I need to fix that, too. Uh, I've been teaching DGL for, like, over six months now, and you would think I would remember to go into the the stuff for the month, and, and 
Yeah, I got an email last week that, that told us some dates have been changed because of the Labor Day weekend and the late start, but I forgot to check. So I, I'm sorry that this presentation isn't updated with the new days. So nobody panic, okay? Thursday and Monday are the due dates, not Wednesday and Sunday. Looks like we've shifted things by day to make up for the Labor Day loss. Um, as you can see, I think four people, three or four people, have already started posting the board. So, uh, yeah, they're early. So the rest of you, hopefully, get moving. Questions, preguntas, about anything, about the course as a whole, about what you need to do this week. By the way, I skipped the other major assignment uh, that's due. I probably got that wrong as well. You know what? Forget this. Let me go back to our course page. What? When is the Digo assignment due then? Let's see. Exploring Digital Literacy. That's due Monday as well. Okay. So... You have two major assignments that are due Monday, the digital identity, which we, which we just gone over. It's only worth 5%, but still 5% is, is something. Uh, but the first major assignment, where 15%, is also due on a Monday. So keep that in mind if you can get the digital identity things sort of out of the way. Um, you can carve out time to work on this assignment. Because this is the assignment I'm going to get into in depth tomorrow. Uh, by the way, we're holding another session tomorrow same exact time I believe and in this one I'm gonna walk you through the first assignment because it's not very difficult but um, yeah as Tony I think just said he's not sure how to use Digo is kinda of confusing yeah it can be kinda of confusing so that's why I'm gonna go over with it over it in depth tomorrow like we'll devote pretty much the entire hour to that to, to that other assignment that's due Monday that's worth 15% because it's not terribly complicated but there are lots of things that we have to have to go over uh, Lauren what was explained in the global class that you did yesterday I thought they only get into the gist of Digo they don't get into the, the specifics of that first assignment too deeply and walk you through it I don't think she did oh, they didn't do that in the past Okay, I'll watch that session. If not, we'll do something else that's fun <laughs> instead. Oh, I'll have to find out who they is. Usually they they didn't do that in the past. They stayed much more um, global. That's why they're called global sessions, so that we can focus more on the specifics of the assignment in our sessions. Okay, uh, good news. Um, Lauren says, the digital identity, do we post in the activity discussion or elsewhere? You're going to post everything on that discussion board. Okay, um, and let me go back to it. Because if you go into the actual discussion board, it depends what kind of project you, you use. But when you make a post, you have different functions here. I think it's this one. Media. Yeah, like this will allow you to sort of drag and drop files or include the URL for a third party piece of media like YouTube or if your Bitstrips comic, uh, comic is hosted at, at somewhere else, you can just put the URL in here. Um, I believe that's, for example, what Paul did when he posted his Bitstrips comic here. That's how he got it to appear here. But if it doesn't appear, even if we just have the link that we can click on, um, I don't think we have an example of that here. Everybody's gotten their thing to show up on the board. But if worse comes to worse, sometimes people just post the link to the board and then people have to click on it. I mean, that's fine as well. It's more useful when it can actually appear in the discussion board. Uh, but everything happens on the class discussion board. Okay? Yeah, I'll have to check out that global session. Like I said, they never did that in the past. So, uh, if not, we'll do something fun tomorrow for this session. Okay, other questions? Uh, about the class, about what we're doing this week? about anything or are we feeling pretty good okay I hope it's fun Tony by the way these are supposed to be like two hour sessions I try to keep them to about an hour because I tend to find that students pass out after an hour um, if I keep them much past an hour they they lose it uh, so I'm not trying to cheat or try to rob you of your time, but I, I really, it's just for, been from experience that I find that I can go away at maximum about an hour and 15 minutes, uh, but that's about it. Jordan says, are we going to go over the digital element assignment? I'm confused. Which one is that? There's a digital identity assignment, which I just went over. Um, then there's a Deagle-related assignment that's coming up. 
I'm not sure what the digital element assignment is. Yeah, if, if you mean the digital identity assignment, I kind of went over it more verbally. Um, I showed the discussion board and showed examples of it. Um, yeah, the Digo assignment I was going to get into tomorrow, but now i got to run and check out that global video, which I have the link for, because um, the plan was to walk you through the assignment, but it sounds like someone's already done that for me. Uh, so, yeah, we'll, we'll figure out what we're going to discuss tomorrow. But we, we may focus on a special topic of interest related to, to digital literacy. Okay, Lauren says, I hate English. Okay, that's good to know. <laughs> uh, this class is less of an English class, even though it contains the word literacy, so that should be a relief. We'll just have to get you up to speed come month four when you have to take English composition because uh, that's a requirement here at Full Sail. So some of you probably, I would guess a third of, well, maybe not a third, I would say a quarter of you will probably just by the luck of the draw end up with me again in month four. Um, so keep that in mind. Uh, any other questions before I let you go? Because I'm not going to force you to stay here if there are no questions. Are we good to go? I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording now because it sounds like the questions have sort of dried up.